What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Knives of the Round Table. My name is Marco and today we are going to be taking a look at the first OTF in my collection. This is the Microtech Ultratech and this is in the Warhound uh, grind. So I want to do a disclaimer here and I'm going to do it here in the first 30 seconds so that you know I am not an OTF expert i am not an otf guy this is the first and only otf that i have for those of you who don't know otf stands for out the front because the blade comes out the front but i don't have any point of comparison versus uh any other microtex uh any heretics any benchmates any the hawk customs uh you know they're supposed to be like like the top best uh, otfs I don't have any of that experience, so I don't have anything to compare this with. So I'm gonna tell you my experience with my first OTF, but bear in mind that I don't have any frame of reference with other OTFs to, to really, to kind of give you a good comparison of, for example, if I talk about action, I can only tell you my experience with this action. I can't tell you, oh, it's, you know, it's softer or stiffer than any others, okay? so. Uh, bear that in mind when when I tell you this, when I give you my review. Now, the the Ultra Tech, it's kind of the the Micro Tech. Uh, I'm gonna call it the Micro Tech standard. They have a lot, and it's very confusing. They have they have from a smaller one, and they have like this. Uh, I don't know eight or nine sizes that are differ very little. But I think that the that the standard is their that what they call their Microtech Ultratech. Because for example, if you get the UTX 70 or the UTX 85, all that means is that it's 70% of the size of this one and 80 85% of the size of this one. So this is kind of their benchmark. Okay. Now I you know generally I'm not I'm not a fan of automatics. I have very few, I, I think I just have like the stitch for my auto and, and this kind of falls into that. And I'm not, I, I'm not a crazy fan of the, of, of the out the front. It's just, it's just not my cup of tea, but I wanted to try one out. And when I saw this blade, it's called the, the Warhound blade. And they don't make this all that often. They, they came out with a batch here not too long ago. I think you can still find them. But you know, it's usually the Hellhound blade, and you know their double-edged kind of spear points, and, and and those didn't really appeal to me. This blade it, it was was much more appealing to me. And I there's a there's a custom folding version of this blade that I would love to get my hands on, but they're super expensive, and super rare. So that's what this that's how I came about to purchasing this because it, I was drawn to to this blade shape. So let me give you kind of a tour of the knife. So this is um, a, a Warncliffe blade, but as you can see, it's not just a Warncliffe. Right? You got speed holes, you got a, a, a fuller, you got, I don't know if you can call that top jumping, it's super aggressive. You got, you know, a double, uh, a double swedge in the front, kind of the same thing in the back. Uh, Microtech logo right here. The, the switch or the deployment is out on the side. And you get a very traditional Microtech uh, pocket clip with a glass breaker in the back. So that's kind of the tour of the knife. Now let me give you uh, some size comparisons. So this, is, like I said, is kind of the Microtech standard, right? And here you can see that lengthwise is very much in the neighborhood of the pair of two. This is the pair of three, so it's a little bit longer than the pair of three. But one of the advantages uh, that I found is that this carries extremely well. This carries very nicely in the pocket because since it doesn't have to fold, it collapses into a very skinny, very, very compact size. You know, if you compare it to the carry profile of, of, the, of the pair two, yeah, it, this is one of the things that kind of disappears in your pocket. It's also very thin, as you can see here, compared to the pair two. So, so, so all the dimensions, you know, other than the length, you know, it's it just because it kind of hides the blade and the mechanism is is very much in line. It, it, it's very compact, okay? So it, it even carries better than the bug out 
probably not better than the mini bug at the mini bug it's tiny uh, but I'm gonna show you here you know in a in, in the folded version so you can see it's longer while it's collapsed right while, while, while it's uh, inside but it's it's very much uh, you know it, it's, it's thinner in this direction is this dimension it, this one's a little bit fatter uh, here I'll, I'll show you it's fatter than the bug out but I think I think it carries similarly to the bug out I think if you like the carry of the bucket, I think that you will like the carry of the of the Ultra Tech. So let's let's kind of get started with this. And I usually start with ergonomics, and the ergonomics on this uh, they're they're neutral. Okay, uh, as you can see, there's no there's not a lot uh, there's not a lot of accommodation for ergonomics, right? Uh, you know, there's a little bit of a curve here it's the the corners there's a flat surface here and it's kind of uh, it has like a large kind of chamfer radius uh, kind of thing your finger does land comfortable here or over here if you want to if, if you want to do a kind of a kind of a saber grip but at the end of the day it it's it's not contoured in any direction so it makes no allowances to to kind of conform to the size of your hand you're, you're you're holding a tiny two by four that that's kind of what you're it, it's it's not uncomfortable uh, to hold in the hand you know the pocket clip a little bit hot spotty right around there uh but uh, this uh, the ergonomics are not good uh, they're not terrible you know they're not gonna but i don't think that you get an otf for kind of a hard use knife you know you get something like a pair of two where you get all kinds of contour you you got to pay places for your fingers you got a palm swedge you get all of these things you get none of that here okay so ergonomics and eh, it just I, and i think that's kind of the case for most otfs i don't think uh, otfs are big in ergonomics i think they sacrifice ergonomics to kind of make it very compact and and they've achieved that here uh, but you can't expect it to feel uh you know the way you're holding a a pair of two or a pair of three okay that's that's just not how this one's gonna feel at all uh cutting uh cutting's actually uh, uh, fairly good uh, and more than anything it's due to the workcliffe blade so workcliffe blades while uh, uh they're not my favorite shape i think i prefer a sheep's foot blade uh they are very utilitarian right opening boxes you know uh, uh just uh cuts on on a flat surface you know those kinds of things are going to be very good and one of the things is it was surprisingly good at slicing let me see if i can get you so blade stock i can't i can't really you know compare it uh, any better than that it, it's actually very similar to the to the pair of two and although so the pair two, you know, it, you, you get a full flat ground from here to here, so you end up with a very thin edge. This one, you get to the full thickness of the ledge very quickly. But one thing that this one has going uh, to its advantage is, for example, if you take a look at something like the, like the, like the bug out, if you're cutting slicing through cardboard or something like that, what happens is you end up dragging, you know, all of the surface drags through the cardboard, right? It's very slicey, but you've got a lot of contact between the cardboard and the blade, you know, and obviously even more when you get in the in the pair two, right? Let's say you're cutting cardboard right through here, which you wanna, you're always cutting as close as you can to, uh, you know, to, to kind of this, this area because you have more leverage, right? And so what happens is this much is dragging, it's causing friction between the cardboard and the blade. Here you get such a small blade. It's 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 so, it's it's very it, it it's very short in this direction, such that it creates a fairly little drag. So it was much slicier. I don't think you would call it a better slicer than than the bug out, just because the bug out it doesn't have a tall blade. It it has a taller blade, but it's thinner stock. So you end up, it's it, it's close. It not quite, but. It, you, you'd be surprised. It kind of surprised me how how slicey this was, just because it, especially going through things like like cardboard, where you're gonna make a kind of a a, a long cut on a material that may drag. This, you know, the fact that it's so 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 short, 
it, it kind of surprised me. That's that that's what I would say. Um, which is which is kind of nice because you end up with kind of a you know it's a, I wouldn't call it a heavy duty blade, but a kind of robust blade that is that is kind of slicey, uh, while at the same time it being you know somewhat strong. So the, the geometry of the blade and the you know and the and the, and the proportions kind of work very well for 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 for, for this knife. It re, it really really does. Now let's talk action. So it's an OTF. So the only the only real thing that I, that that you that, that we talk about is kind of how it deploys and how it closes. So it deploys with authority, right? It, it you you feel it. it. It it deploys with you know with gusto. There is a tiny little bit of blade play, and I think that's kind of from what I've gathered. It's kind of normal for OTFs, except for the Hawks Customs. I think they don't have any blade play. This one you do have. I don't know if you can hear it. It's up and down and side to side. You get both uh, both directions of blade plate. So, you know, not, it's it, it's not something that I'm used to. You know, I like my, <laughs> you know, you're used to, if you come from the folder world, you know, one of the things that you are always looking for is for zero blade plate, right? And this is actually fairly normal for OTF. So to have blade plate with the exception of that one maker. But, what I was surprised it was about uh, how hard it was to deploy and to close. It it took uh, more force than I was expecting. And again, I don't have any point of comparison, but I can tell you from what I've seen, you know, uh, you see people kind of going like that in, in, in their reviews. And after three or four cycles, you know, I'm, I'm kind of tired. I, it, 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 it's not as 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 easy or as smooth as I was expecting it to be in my mind, okay? So just be aware that if you're getting going after your first OTF, I I think it was, and I don't know if, you know, if you have to have it for, you know, I've had this, I don't know, four, four to six months. I haven't carried it, um, uh, probably, I've carried it probably uh, three weeks total or so, or thereabouts. So maybe it breaks in. I don't know. I can't tell you about that, uh, but I can tell you that it felt uh, much that the that overcoming that you you move it and it gets to, it hits kind of a wall. You know, if you, if you're used to uh, to handguns, you know, a pistol or a revolver, you know, you get to a wall and then you break the wall and you get over it. It's it's fairly stiff to get there. You know, for example, I. My my son is uh, he's kind of getting into the uh, he's gotten into the hobby he's been about for for about a year, uh, you know but uh, you know he he kind of has to grab it with kind of both hands and kind of push with both his fingers you know to to kind of get it there so it, you know that kind of thing so just be aware that you know from the action standpoint it does deploy you know like I said with authority it's it, when it does deploy when it deploys it's satisfying but it takes more kind of force than than what I'm used to. Like if you see my finger, you know, that's that's at rest and you can see how it becomes white as I'm as I'm trying to to apply force to get it to get it in. You know, it's just it's it's quite a bit. Uh next uh let's talk about fit and finish. So I think that the blade is a gorgeous blade. I think the you know it's it's a heavy stone wash. Uh, you've got this what's called a warhound blade and I, I I like the shape I think it looks like a bat out of hell you know it just looks badass it in in Nick Shabazz's lingo very murder uh, murdery and mur it has murderosity as he says uh, definitely a, a, I mean especially in an OTF with that blade shape I think it, it's even more right uh, I think that that the finish of the blade, the you know, it came screaming sharp. They they actually do a, a, a pretty good job. It's M three ninety. In case I haven't mentioned it, it's M three ninety blade, uh, and and I think overall the you know the feel of the of, of the handle. I think that the pocket clip, it the jimping here is very effective. I'm glad that it, they have it's 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 aggressive. Okay, you can feel it in your finger. But I don't think you would be able to deploy it if it was any softer than what the, when they have here. I do like the the kind of the Morpheon logo here. Uh, so I think other than they haven't achieved the the, the blade play 
uh, that uh, Hux Custom is, is supposed to have, you know, where they have zero blade play. They, you, you, you don't get that. And I'm gonna rattle it for you. There I'm doing like a circular motion. So, you know, not great. Uh, I'm not used to that. I think it's fairly common for, for OTFs, but just be aware that you will get blade play uh, even on a, I think this is like a, like 350 to 400 dollars or thereabouts. So it's not an inexpensive knife. And I, I mean, if if one maker has been able to achieve no blade play, I think, you know, maybe others should be able to achieve it as well. I uh, so that's uh, for fit and finish. Uh, now airing of grievances, the blade plate, as I've mentioned, I think it's fairly stiff uh, uh, to deploy and to close. Uh, and then you've got the proprietary hardware, and I just just hate when they do a proprietary hardware, and then they sell you the, you know, the the, the it, they don't include the bit to uh, to kind of disassemble it, and then they charge you however many dollars to get you know the proprietary. Uh, I, I I I hate that. I I, I don't love that. So uh, you know, I'm I'm okay with proprietary hardware as long as they include the bit. You know. Uh, other than that, just put a Torx uh, screw on it. I'll uh, I'll be fine. I think this looks amazing, but the fact that you can't, you know, get in there and maintain it, and the problem is that you know when it's closed, you know, as you can imagine, this is the the thing that goes in the bottom of your of your pocket. It's uh, it, it 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 just lint just begs to go in there. So you're gonna have to maintain this, and I can't do it right now because I don't have the the tool. So. Uh, I wish that Microtech would include it, you know, just a bit, just a bit. So you don't have to give me a, a fancy pan or, or a fancy screwdriver or anything like that. I'll use my own. Just give me the bit. Okay, that's that's what I would say. Well, guys, that's my review for the first and only uh, OTF in my collection. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you did, then like and subscribe. And until I see you at the next one, take care.